morning viewers and welcome back to my channel this is thermodynamics part 2 uh, as we have seen introduction to thermodynamics and some of the basic concepts in thermodynamics part 1 uh, we are going to learn some more basic concepts and some advanced concepts uh, in this video so before going to start today's topics uh, i would like to revise whatever we have discussed in the first video so in thermodynamics part 1 we have seen uh, what is thermodynamics and what is the distinction or what is the difference between heat and temperature and uh, what is pressure and volume actually so thermodynamics is nothing but the study of flow of heat and its properties the next one we have seen is the distinction between heat and temperature it is nothing but a type of energy or a form of energy which flows from hot bodies to the cold bodies or from a body at high temperature to a body at low temperature as it is the type of energy or one of the forms of energy uh, its unit is si unit is joule so next on the other hand we are having temperature temperature is nothing but the degree of hotness or coldness of an object and this can be measured in several units just as a uh, degree kelvin degree celsius fahrenheit just like that and uh, <clears throat> apart from this uh, we discussed the pressure also pressure is nothing but the force acting on a given area let us suppose this is the pole with some area capital a if i exert a force in a perpendicular direction this is nothing but the pressure pressure is nothing but force only but this force always acts in a perpendicular manner on a given area right so as pressure is nothing but force per area its unit is newton per meter square we have already seen and uh, newton per meter is also called pascal and uh, volume is nothing but uh, the ability of occupying some space the object occupies it most space will be having more volume right so its unit is a meter cube as we know the formula for the volume is length into breadth into height from this we can calculate this unit meter cube so apart from this we are having one more distinction between uh, degree celsius scale and uh, fahrenheit scale now i must each and every one to concentrate on the word now see first of all here it is degree celsius scale this is degree fahrenheit scale so on this degree celsius scale the lower fixing point or the minimum possible temperature is 0 degree celsius this is called lower fixing point and uh, the highest temperature at this is 100 degree celsius this is called upper fixing point right in between this 0 degree celsius and 100 degree celsius they are 100 equal intervals or 100 equal parts each part is corresponding to 1 degree celsius so on the other hand we are having degree fahrenheit scale the minimum possible temperature here is 32 degree fahrenheit and here it is 212 fahrenheit why i am starting from 32 degree fahrenheit because on the degree celsius scale 0 degree celsius is exactly equal to 32 degree fahrenheit on fahrenheit scale these two are equal nothing but either you say 0 degree celsius or you say 32 degree fahrenheit the amount of temperature or <clears throat> the reading will be the same right so in between this 32 degree fahrenheit and 212 fahrenheit there are 180 equal parts so this is called lower fixing point and this is called upper fixing point right so these are our today's topics our today's topic starts with the, the first one the most important thermodynamic system a thermodynamic system is uh, nothing but the particular area or a specific area under consideration on which we can do the thermodynamic study 
I mean, <coughs> let us suppose here is a container, and this container, in this container, you are having an ice cube, right? So, as you go on heating this ice cube, the ice cube starts melting, nothing but it is uh, changing its state from solid state to liquid state, right? So, you are observing, you are uh, doing your study on this particular container. So, this particular area or this specific region becomes your thermodynamic system. Nothing but, if you supply some amount of heat to this, to this ice cube, what happens? First of all, it transfers from solid state to the liquid state, right? Its uh, temperature changes, its volume changes, its shape also changes, its pressure also changes. So, so all those physical quantities uh, which correctly determines, which correctly determines, which correctly explains this thermodynamic system are called thermodynamic state variables, right? And the area or the specific region which is under study, which is under consideration is called thermodynamic system. So, thermodynamic state variables are the variables. Variable nothing but the physical quantity or a thing which is able to vary. Variable nothing but which is able to vary. So, uh, thermodynamic state variables are the variables which correctly explains a thermodynamic system. And a thermodynamic system is nothing but a particular area under study. Right. So, what is thermal equilibrium now? Thermal is two objects. Two objects are said to be a thermal equilibrium if they are at the same temperature. Let us suppose here is a container and in this container you are having a wall and in this wall there is a small hole here. Right. So initially I am closing this hole and in this section A I am keeping hot water and uh, in this section, I am keeping cold water, I mean normal water, right? So, what happens uh, if I open this hole, the heat energy transfers from hot region to the cold region. Nothing but a region at hot, high temperature to a region at low temperature. Here I explain what the heat is transferring from a region at high temperature to a region at low temperature. So after some time, uh, both the sections A and B will be at will be at <coughs> same temperature. So after some time, I can write temperature of A is equal to temperature of B. Nothing but temperature of section A is equal to temperature of section B. This is the only reason. This is the only reason uh, why why a cold drink becomes hotter and a coffee becomes colder. Why? Because they always they will be always in a tendency. They will always be in a situation to maintain the equal temperature with the surrounding. <coughs> For example, if you take a uh, cold drink bottle, initially it is too cool, right? So if you keep it in your room or in your hall, what happens is the surrounding or the environment is at high temperature and your cold drink bottle is at low temperature so that the cold drink bottle uh, continuously absorbs heat from the surrounding and from the environment, right? So after some time by absorbing heat, it maintains the temperature equal to the environment. After 5 minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour, you will see that the temperature of the surrounding is exactly equal to the temperature of the cold drink. It will no longer be the cool as it was before, right? So, after some time, <coughs> it is maintaining the same temperature as the environment. In the same manner, if you bring a cup, cup of coffee, what happens? So, initially, it was initially it is too hot, right? So, as the coffee is more hotter than the environment, right? So, <coughs> it will start losing heat to the environment or it will supply heat to the environment after some time 5 minutes 10 minutes or half an hour you will see that the temperature of the coffee or the temperature of the tea is exactly equal to the temperature of the uh, surrounding or environment so this is the only reason why cooling becomes uh, uh, more hotter and uh, the 
coffee becomes colder me me uh, the <coughs> cold drink uh, is not becoming more and more hot as coffee why because it has to maintain equal temperature as the surrounding and uh, the cup of coffee uh, as it is cooling down it does not uh, becomes as cool as a cold drink why because it has to maintain the same temperature as the surrounding so after some time the <clears throat> due to the transformation of heat due to the transfer of heat objects uh, maintain the equal temperature so if two objects are at the same temperature same temperature then those two are said to be thermal equilibrium what is thermodynamic equilibrium when it is in first of all mechanical equilibrium right when it is in thermal equilibrium and uh, finally it must be in chemical equilibrium an object or a system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium if and only if the net force on it is zero let us suppose i'm standing here i'm standing here on me the downward gravity is exactly balanced by the normal normal force right upward normal force so so on me on me uh, the downward force is equal to the upward force so i am in the mechanical equilibrium now uh, thermal equilibrium we have already seen so, when two objects are said to be in thermal equilibrium if their temperature are same so chemical equilibrium is nothing but uh, the two objects are said to be in chemical equilibrium if the number of particles are same in both right uh, now if if a system is in mechanical equilibrium thermal equilibrium and chemical equilibrium then only it is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium remember one point thermal equilibrium is different from thermodynamic equilibrium thermal equilibrium always refers to the same temperature right thermodynamic process thermodynamic process is nothing but the passage or the transfer of a particular thermodynamic system from initial state to final state let us suppose you need not to think very typically uh, uh, you know <coughs> you did not to go into uh, so much deep or so much depth or you need not to get confused the concept is very very easy thermodynamic process melting of ice is nothing but a thermodynamic process right and what is the beauty of uh, that thermodynamic process you know melting of ice it it starts and it ends at a particular temperature only the complete process is carried out or the complete process takes place at a constant temperature <coughs> right now so let us suppose this is a glass in which i have some ice cubes right if i start heating before i start heat the temperature is equal to 0 degree celsius right if i start heating all of the ice melts and becomes what water now quickly after the ice melts the last cube melts the temperature is equal to 0 degree celsius only right so melting of ice is also an example for thermodynamic process in which uh, it, it transforms itself from an initial thermodynamic state to a final thermodynamic state initially it was in a solid state and finally it is in the liquid state so the last one is a cyclic process a cyclic process is the process in which a system starts from a particular uh, initial thermodynamic state and uh, after some time it turns back to the same state ultimately it turns to the same thermodynamic state so that process is called cyclic process uh, you'll get more clarity after giving a listen to the example see let us suppose this is ice if i heat ice it will become water after melting and uh, if i further heat it will become what vapor right if i cool down the vapor it will become water again if i cool down the vapor it will become water again if i further cool the water it will again become ice so 
from ice to vapor and again vapor to ice. This is a cycle, right? So this process is called cyclic process in which the system again touches the same initial thermodynamic state.